Katerina Yaka watched the German soldiers flee. Streaming from the east, that's what she was seeing. Allied bombers flew above them. She thought they all might die, and then soon there was the silence of all the SS men. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. They all sang the Internationale. Katarina Yaka saw red flags flapping in the breeze above the Russian tanks, and she fell upon her knees. And so many different voices in so many different tongues sang the most beautiful song that could ever have been sung. In German, Lithuanian, in Polish and in Dutch, a myriad of melodies has never had been such. In Russian and in Yiddish, Italian and French, emerging from the forests beneath the trench. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. They all sang the Internationale. Völker hört die Signale auf zum letzten Gefecht. Die Internationale erkämpft das Menschenrecht. Völker hört die Signale auf zum letzten Gefecht. Die Internationale erkämpft das Menschenrecht. Hello and welcome to Revolutionary Socialist Review for May 6, 2022. This is Chris Driscoll, your host, co-host, whatever, uh, and sitting on top of me, at least from my perspective, is Rainer Shea, our other co-host. We've got two. So uh, with that, we'll begin. The first topic tonight is PayPal resorts to piracy against alternative news media now, this is quite a story really it's uh it's amazing to me that any private corporation has the gall the the criminality the sheer criminality to do this but uh consortium news and mint press news both of which uh are uh uh sources for stories on this show quite frequently. Consortium News and Mint Press News are independent media outlets that have challenged NATO's narrative on the ongoing Ukraine crisis. PayPal has frozen the accounts of Consortium News and Mint Press News and may seize the funds of independent media voices in a chilling example of corporate enforced censorship. Consortium News, Mint Press, and various independent journalists have recently received notice that their PayPal accounts are frozen and they are no longer allowed to use the platform. According to the notice, the funds contained within the accounts may be returned after 180 days. That's theft in itself. But according to Consortium News Editor-in-Chief Joe Loria, who spoke to a PayPal employee, 
if PayPal determines there was a violation, some or all of the $9,348.14 may be seized by PayPal as damages. I don't see how they've got any damages, no matter what. <laughs> no matter what Consortium News did, that's just ridiculous. Uh, this is outright piracy and theft. And you know what we do to pirates? The process to determine if the funds will be returned is not known to the public and is entirely determined by PayPal itself rather than a judge or jury, according to Loria, who spoke to Matt Taibbi's TK News. Consortium News has been critical of the mainstream narrative on Ukraine pushed by NATO and the United States. It has also staunchly defended WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, even having a dedicate, dedicated section to the journalist's legal proceedings. PayPal gave no indication of why it shuttered Consortium's account. I'm noticing the patterns in who they go after. And uh, so far, I don't believe they've gone after anyone who's outside of a specific um, set of uh, the all indie media network. As in, we've seen Caleb Maupin uh, have his personal account um, taken down yeah. uh, clearly because he is uh, has been affiliated with RT. Uh, we've also seen other personal... And because in his own uh, indi individual uh, uh, accounts, uh, he takes a strong stand uh, supporting uh, the Russian Federation and its, in its uh, special military uh, mission in Ukraine. That's, that's the main thing right there. Whether it's well, on IT thing, or anywhere else. Yeah, the, the same thing hasn't happened to me or a lot of these other people who take the same stance. So it seems like, the at least for now, the first people they're going after are the people they can trace to these media orgs that they're able to demonize. Archie is one of the most vilified media outlets you can think of. Yeah, they go uh, after the big fish. We'll see what this turns into, how far it's going to get extended. Well, I mean, uh, the pattern is uh, pretty, um, it, it's uh, pretty clear to see what's going to happen. They go after the big fish and then they start eating up the little fish. So <laughs> uh, you haven't been uh, hit yet. That's because no. uh, you're not, uh, you don't have the, uh, the kind of audience that, uh, uh, that that Mint Press News or Consortium News or Caleb Maupin uh, or some of the other people. I mean, uh, uh, similar things have happened uh, uh, recently. Um, who was it? Uh, oh, I can't remember the names, but a couple of uh, of of well known uh, alternative media personalities have been kicked off of Twitter in just the last two weeks. So uh, they're coming after you. Ah, they're coming after me. Uh, but they'll get to the little guys later. They, they're going after the big guys first. That, uh, that's my opinion anyway. So anything else on that? Okay, next topic. The Donbass people's victory against Ukrainian fascism is inspiration for liberation movements around the world. Rainer Shea. I see what's been occurring in Ukraine as a foreshadowing to how the revolution will go down in what's currently called the United States. Uh, because the reason why these people in the east of what's uh, 
been known to be Ukraine, as in Ukraine, Ukraine as we currently understand it. Ukraine is a, an arbitrarily created country with arbitrary borders, more so than most. That's the part that's been, it's yeah. been part of uh, Ukraine since 1922. Uh, that's, yes. when, that's when Lenin made his big mistake in giving away a huge part of the uh, Russian uh, industrial heartland to Ukraine. So I wouldn't call that uh, colonization, but apparently it was a mistake and you're willing to criticize Lenin for that. Um, I do. I love Lenin very much. And I think Lenin was almost always right. But this was his big mistake. This single action by Lenin and by, I guess, the other Bolshevik leaders in uh, uh, the newly formed Soviet Union, because the Soviet Union was formed in, in 1922, uh, they made the hugest mistake. Now, I understand that there are reasons, you know, I mean, basically, they were looking for ways to uh, pacify and satisfy the uh, Ukrainian leadership. So, I mean, this was basically a, 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 a big giveaway to Ukraine uh, to help lure the Ukraine into joining the Soviet Union. Um, but in the long run, no matter what, no matter what the circumstances were at the time, Lenin made a huge mistake, in my opinion, that, ca that has caused untold suffering, the deaths of 14,000, at least 14,000 people in the Donbass over the last eight years, uh, murdered by Nazis. Uh, this, you know, is, is it's a, a huge mistake. But, you know, politicians. Um, Lenin did what he had to do to put together the Soviet Union. So, And I bet he was not anticipating that the nightmare we're witnessing now would transpire. How right. could he have ever anticipated yeah. what the future leaders of the Soviet Union would do. And right. now the, the imperialists have gotten their hands into this broken up Soviet Union or a certain part of it and have been carrying out this genocide <clears throat> by proxy. The yeah. local people have responded by rising up and forming their own governments. And I believe that at a certain point, the equivalent is going to happen on this continent where national, impress national oppression is intensifying. Yeah. We're seeing an intensification of inequality, which especially impacts the colonized peoples. We're seeing an intensification of police brutality, pol uh, police militarization. Um, and I believe that at a certain point, the most disenfranchised uh, most marginalized peoples here are going to push back um, in a way that we can't precisely anticipate how it will look. Uh, that would be undialectical, but seeing the way that oppressed nations in eastern Ukraine have reacted these last 10 years, we can get a sense of both how the uh, liberation struggle will go down and how the backlash will go down because the fascists have reacted to this by carrying out extreme violence. And this violence has been fully backed by the entire imperialist sphere. Uh, it's taken the uh, full effort of one of the world's uh, major military powers, Russia, uh, to save these nations from annihilation. And yeah. I find that troubling because uh, who's going to save <clears throat> our liberation struggle? We're going to have to try to uh, win it through a different means, you could say. We're going to have to try to win it the way that Che won it in Cuba by waging uh, a, a different kind of struggle, you could say. You, you should read, everyone should read Che's writings to get exactly what I mean. 
so the conditions here are different, so and we're going to have to take a different approach. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I have no crystal balls, so I don't know what's going to happen. But the thought that the American empire is headed for a big breakup including right here in the heartland of the empire uh, called the United States. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what I, you're, you're, you are not the only uh, uh, analyst who said that. Many analysts are predicting uh, a breakup of the United States as, in these coming years as the uh, evil empire uh, crumbles. Okay, next on the list here, Russian forces find torture chamber near Kyrgyzstan, legless body in Russian uniform rigged to explode. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, there, uh, it, this, this, uh, battle for Mariupol, and now that Russia has totally uh, pacified Mariupol, the only thing left to deal with is these insane Nazis down in their deep, dark tunnels under the Azov uh, uh, steel, uh, steel mill, steel plant. They are finding more and more and more um, Nazi crimes that the United States and its uh, minions in NATO uh, are supporting 100% with billions of dollars in lethal weaponry aid. Anyway, investigators from Russia and, the, and Donbass have collected reams of evidence on suspected war crimes by Ukrainian neo-Nazi formations against Russian troops, Donbass militia fighters, and civilians going back to 2014. After Moscow began its operation to demilitarize Ukraine, additional evidence of such crimes has emerged. Russia, or Russian security forces operating in the liberated Kyrgyzstan region have discovered a makeshift torture chamber believed to have been used either by the neo-Nazi fighters or the Ukraine military. A security service source told Sputnik, uh, Sputnik News that the facility containing the bodies of a man in a Russian military uniform with his legs cut off and rigged to detonate was found in the village of Zelenovka, about seven kilometers northeast of the city of Kyrgyzstan. The rigged body, presumably that of a Russian serviceman, was found in the basement of an old oak a roadside cafe along M14 Highway in Zelenovka. The body uh, has the remnants of special military clothing used by uh, the Russian armed forces. The body has no legs, shows signs of torture, and has a slit larynx. The source said the body was said to have been found in uh, lying on an anti-tank mine with TNT also placed in the area with the setup apparently meant to kill whoever found it. Syringes, presumably for narcotics and a large amount of plastic boxes used to store U.S.-made Javelin anti-tank systems were also found scattered around the cafe grounds. Investigators provided Sputnik with a video form, uh, video from uh, the scene. So what do you think of that? Pretty uh, hor uh, uh, horrible. I mean, 
God, frightening. What these Nazis will think up. That's, does this contrast with uh, what is constantly coming from figures like Malcolm Nance, that uh, intel asset who uh, joined the army in Ukraine and has been acting as a propaganda conduit uh, for this whole operation. Uh, there's this image that they project, and there's the reality. Um, yeah. And it's, it's interesting to see uh, this dissonance uh, develop. It's interesting to see um, the, the way that they're trying to manipulate the narrative to make it so that Russia is purely in the wrong, Ukraine is purely in the right. Yeah, uh, in, in the coming weeks and months, as more of these Nazis emerge uh, from out of the bowels of the Azov uh, steel plant, uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to see and hear a lot more of these kinds of stories. Um, I mean, actually, the next story I've got up um, has to do with that. So we're uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna see a lot more of this kind of stuff uh, in the coming days as we get into this and as more and more of the Nazis are captured. Um. So next on the list, from Duma to uh, Xinjiang to Buka. The U.S. empire's atrocity propaganda is the same. Rain or shine? I keep thinking back to, what was it, four, five years ago when uh, a couple of the most famous um, supposed Assad gas attacks uh, were reported in the news, uh, first by the State Department and by the, the White Helmets, um, and we were made to, or most people were made to accept these narratives, accept these dubious accounts, uh, due to the, you could say, cinematic portrayal uh, that had surrounded Syria uh, throughout the years leading up to it. Uh, we saw some strange, sometimes comical stuff, as described by Max Blumenthal, uh, in the article that I, I quote him in, in my article, uh, he was describing pretty ridiculous Hollywood Max, antics. Max, <laughs> like, Max uh, Blumenthal of the Gray Zone. Yeah, yeah. That's his publication. Uh, he was describing uh, Hollywood actors taking on pseudo-Arab accents to um, make it more... Uh, plausible, the things they were saying about Syria. We saw uh, a kid being fed a, a literal script uh, for a language that uh, she clearly did not know. Ghana al Abed uh, was the kid, and, and she was reading from these scripts to uh, call for uh, U.S. intervention, essentially, to demonize Assad. Uh, this child was definitely a victim of uh, some weird theatrical process that was being carried out behind the scenes. And it all served to, as I say in my article, make people look at Syria the way they look at Marvel movies, where there's uh, a villain and uh, designated heroes. Uh, their <coughs> moral ambiguity is... Uh, is papered over to uh, <laughs> make way for the overarching pro-military narrative. And there's always this uh, perception where <laughs> we're supposed to view these, uh, these essentially they're allies of the uh, U.S. military industrial complex. And in a lot of cases, they're uh, trying to fight bad guys who actually have a point in that the bad guys are fighting the system, like in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, but they always come out on top in the end, and they're always ultimately portrayed as good. 
and that's how we were supposed to view people like the white helmets when in reality the white helmets were caught many times directly assisting in executions committed by the Al Nusra Front in Syria. Um, they were caught fabricating atrocity stories to justify uh, bombings that, in many cases, killed civilians, including civilian children. These are the realities of the situation that. Uh, we were not hearing, and the equivalent is true now. Uh, Xinjiang was uh, another example of this kind of theatrical production where U.S. imperialism uh, fabricates these atrocity narratives to construct an overarching uh, cinematic Marvel-esque uh, storytelling technique. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, quite amazing. The, just the, 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 uh, the, the dishonesty of the propaganda in contrast to the way they are presented. And you're exactly right. These are presented like, like, uh, uh, comic book characters, you know, comic book superheroes, uh, the good guys, the American good guys, um, and the uh, the bad guys, no matter who they are, whether it's uh, Bashir al-Assad or uh, Vladimir Putin uh, or uh, President uh, Z of, uh, of China, uh, they're presented as demons, as, as literally as devils, demons, as Hitler. You know, Hitler's one of their favorite uh, ways to contrast with these people. Uh, and yet, anyone who does a little bit of digging into alternative media, into the media of the countries that are being slandered, will find that. Uh, that the American propaganda is is uh, childish, it's absurd, and it's based on lies. You know, I, I'm trying to remember who was it that coined the term uh, "empire of lies." Um, I think that might have been uh, Vladimir Putin, who called the American. Uh, evil empire, the empire of lies. And that's really what it is. It is the empire of lies. These are uh, Marvel comic books uh, transformed uh, from, you know, the innocent, childish, uh, good guy, bad guy uh, story uh, into a hellish uh, 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 transformation of, of that into a uh, in, into a a a, a story uh, based on lies. So it's really it's really something. It really is. Okay, <laughs> next on the list. As of stall worker, Russia's special op was the only way to end Azov's hellish reign over Mariupol. And of course, this has to do with uh, Mariupol, the uh, crucial uh, city, um, uh, port city in the southeastern part of um ukraine um that there was a huge battle over the last couple of months um between the russian uh army and the ukrainazis the the nazis who um who essentially now run uh all of the essential security components of the ukrainian state they run the army. They run uh, the 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 uh, um, uh, 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 police. Um, 
So they have a, a lot of power, a lot more power than the American uh, uh, dictators. The dictators here in, in the United States of America are pretending or uh, their minions in um, in uh, uh, their minions in um, uh, uh, NATO. Uh, if Jenny, uh, David, 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 York, 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 I'm not quite pronouncing that right. I'm sure, but, uh, something like that, um, has worked in the Azo Azovstal steel plant for 45 years, but he considers it a God's miracle that he has escaped to Russia's uh, Sevast Sev Sevastopol safe and sound shortly after fleeing embattled Mariupol. On 6 April, Orthodox Christians celebrate the Annunciation, but for Eugeny uh, David, David uh, Yuk, this day is now also marked by another miracle, he and his wife Anna managed to escape Mariupol through uh, Novas, Novas of Ovsk, Novazovsk, uh, a town controlled by the Donetsk militia, ending up in a hospital in the Crimean city of Sevastopol. Thanking God for the way she and her husband managed to survive, Anna now suggests that the uh, uh, that the uh, Azov nationalists simply uh, used the residents of Mario Mariupol to unleash the hate they had towards anyone who aligned themselves with anything remotely Russian, Crimeans, people of the Donbass, or anyone else. The apartment block where they lived in Mariupol was damaged by a bomb that targeted the Azov Battalion's hardware in a uh, courtyard nearby. The building is located in uh, Azovstal, uh, Skaya Street, uh, just one bus stop away from the now world famous Azovstal steel plant, where David Yuk worked for about five decades. Local women, David David Yuk, Yuk says, begged on their knees for Azov's thugs not to place their military equipment in the block's yard, but their pleas fell on deaf ears. You could clearly see the insignia they have. They have the devil there, he says, recalling the tanks and the APCs placed in his backyard, visible from his window. After Azov uh, parked its armored uh, carrier uh, armored personnel carrier next to the apartment complexes, using them as a shield. The buildings were damaged in the strikes, but the Azov militants survived the attack by taking shelter in the apartments of local residents and later fled. They're monsters, David Yuk says. Just so that, that it's clear now or how they treated ordinary people. They occupied the corner, corner apartments of our house, and on the fifth story, there was a paralyzed man bedridden for about five years. They just stormed in, smashed out the window, and placed their weapons there. His wife, she told me this herself, asked, uh, to take him to another room, and they were like, nah, leave him there with us. It'll be more fun. <clears throat> Civilians in Azovstal 
were brought there by the nationalists who took people from uh, Vostochny district and promised to take them to a safe place, David Yuk says. The safe place turned out to be the bomb shelter of the ill-fated steel plant. According to the Kremlin, the nationalists are using civilians there as a human shield, with Russian forces having surrounded the plant, but refraining from storming it. I'm trying to comprehend uh, how any sort of social base uh, has come to exist within Ukraine for these kinds of atrocities, uh, by which I mean... Uh, how has the regime uh, been able to find so much support for uh, their anti-Russian agenda, uh, for their racism against Russians, uh, despite Ukraine essentially being part of Russia? Uh, Ukraine is of the same cultural lineage as Russia and Belarus. So uh, why was there... Uh, let's not lie to themselves, a pre-existing hostility towards Russians even before the coup. Well, you could partly explain that uh, through the uh, so-called Holodomor propaganda, that generations long campaign to scapegoat Stalin for the uh, 1932 famine, but that's not really attached to material reality. I mean, it was based in a real uh, event, uh, but the reality is that Stalin and Russia were not to blame for that event. So why was uh, there this cultural animosity? Well, we've seen in other cases the power of um, the CIA's uh, d disinformation, of the CIA's efforts to splinter nations. We saw how there was this hatred stirred up within Yugoslavia during the 90s, how, as you've described, uh, the U.S. operatives there would uh, commit an atrocity and then uh, blame it on uh, the Serbs or against uh, the other ethnic groups they were trying to scapegoat, and how that was effective in manufacturing a social base for uh, NATO's intervention. I believe that that's been happening in Ukraine throughout the last 10 years. And now we're seeing an intensification of it where uh, these CIA operatives are exploiting all of this uh, chaos and death and suffering uh, to uh, hone in all of the Ukrainian people's pain uh, towards <laughs> hating Russia. That's the CIA's goal to manufacture hatred for Russia, weaponizing the very suffering that the United States has created. What next? Hey, next up on the agenda is uh, the cycle of perpetual war the U.S. empire has engineered in Ukraine and how to end it. As we were talking about last week, there's a real danger of uh, the next cycle within this um, pattern of warfare in Ukraine getting started a few years from now. Uh, a scenario where after Ukraine loses the uh, war for the eastern territories, uh, in a few years, Ukraine is just going to rearm and uh, come back with a vengeance. And then Russia will have to intervene again and so on and so forth. Uh, but there is a way to uh, cut off that uh, nightmarish scenario. Uh, before things get even worse than they are now. And that's to um, carry out, you could say, a new great patriotic war, as they, they call it in Russia, 
uh, to effectively overthrow the Nazi regime that has emerged within Ukraine. And uh, I don't expect uh, Russia to uh, try to do that by uh, directly overthrowing Zelensky, like Bush overthrew uh, Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Uh, that would be excessive. And as uh, the Iraq war showed, that kind of thing doesn't really work. The best option, I think, and uh, the Russian Communist Party thinks, is to uh, strong arm Ukraine into holding new, truly democratic elections, uh, which produce a leadership that won't kowtow to NATO. Um, and that sounds uh, idealistic when you say it out loud, but it's the only way to stop this cycle of violence. Yeah. I think after this war is over, which um, it's uh, <clears throat> not going to be long from now, it's going to be months from now, not years, but I think when this war is over, uh, the Nazis in Ukraine will have uh, been uh, widely dispersed or eliminated. Uh, I don't think they're going to be the problem that they have been in the past. The real problem, I mean, they, you know, most Ukrainians don't like the Nazis. That, uh, that is evident just from the votes in recent elections where uh, the uh, Nazi parties have done very poorly in the elections. The problem comes in that the Nazis, ha the Nazis have wheedled themselves into key positions in the military, in the police, um, and, and in the government. Zelensky's not a Nazi himself, um, although he certainly has uh, supported some very Nazi-esque uh, things, but how much of that is because he's been strong-armed, I don't know. But he's not the real problem. The real problem is that the Nazis have wheedled themselves into all the crucial positions in the government, in the military, in the police force, um, in the uh, the uh, the um, FSB, which is their CIA, basically. Um, so to me, that's not going to be a problem. And they will be demilitar demilitarized, basically. I mean, as it is right now, they don't have what they need to fight. Um, and they're losing very badly because of it. Uh, when it comes time for new elections, um, I think we're going to see quite a, quite a big difference because what we're going to see is something a little bit closer to what the Ukrainian people really want and have always really wanted, you know, which is peace, prosperity, and they and and most of them know. I mean, we're getting a really um, dishonest look at what Ukraine really is from the American government and the press, uh, the media, the news media that. Uh, 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 is owned by the same people who run the American government, government, the capitalist ruling class, that is. We're getting a really uh, dishonest look at what Ukraine is. And we'll get a much clearer look at what Ukraine is um, once... Ukraine has been fully denazified and demilitarized. So I don't really see this, uh, what you see as far as uh, the problems coming up. Um, I don't know if, the, you know, uh, what it comes down to is how much of the Nazi network has been destroyed by this special military operation of the Russians. From what the Russians say, 
it's going along as planned. And I tend to trust what the Russians say, although, you know, you've got to take everything anybody says in a war with a grain of salt, because uh, the truth really is the first victim of any war. But I tend to trust that the Russians, what they're saying is true. And if what they're saying is true, I don't think we're, ha- we're going to have the same problem. What we're going to have is a much smaller Ukraine um, because the whole uh, eastern and southern part of Ukraine will be gone. It will be part of Russia or it will be independent states. Um, But what's left of Ukraine, those people, I mean, there is always going to be a right wing, nationalistic, uh, even fascistic uh element as particularly in that part of ukraine the part that will be left but the great majority of ukrainians are not that way in my opinion what i've seen well Um, there's the cia the cia doesn't uh bend to the will of the local people as you of course know uh, and I fear that the CIA will just be able to keep the right wing uh, in power, no problem, until something more fundamental changes, like a, there's an actual dictatorship <laughs> proletariat. Well, I don't know. I don't. Th- I don't think the CIA is doing real well right now. The CIA is losing the war. <laughs> well, uh, we'll see. You know, we'll see. It's an interesting scenario that you've laid out for us, and it gives us room for thought. So leave it that way. The last point tonight on the list is a video, and I'm not going to play the video. It would be way too long. I mean, the the video is about an hour long, I think, or 40 40 minutes to an hour or something like that. It's by Danny Haifong who is a uh, contributing editor at uh, Black Agenda Report, one of my favorite uh, go-to publications. Um, Anyway, Danny has this video out where the title of the video is Russia's Intervention in Ukraine Explained. Um, And it's quite good quite good i mean i i think highly of danny we've had him on the show a few times um he's you know he he's always in the right he's uh uh done a pretty good job with this particular video so i just wanted to uh point the video out we will have a link to the video under this uh uh episode of our show when it's uh, put up on uh, YouTube. And so people can go to it just as we will have a links to all of Rainer's articles and to all of the other articles uh, that I pointed out. So I want to, I want to also uh, say, you know, you don't really get the full blast of these articles uh, just by hearing us give highlights of it the highlights are designed to lead you to this uh this is truly um revolutionary socialist review um in that we are reviewing what we feel are the uh most important articles of the week And so our main goal for everyone in our audience is to lead you towards uh, reading those articles, to looking at those articles, or in the case of Danny's uh, video, uh, taking a look at this video. It's really quite good. Um, And he does a, a, a great explanation of what's behind uh, the Russian intervention in Ukraine, why the Russians are intervening in Ukraine, why they had to, why they were forced by circumstances to intervene in Ukraine, and what this whole uh, Ukrainian 
uh, uh, conflict is all about. So uh, please take a look. So with that, um, that's all that I have tonight. How about you, Rainer? Hmm. Well, there was, uh, there was something I was, uh, hoping to get at earlier, uh, but I felt it might be tangential. Huh? Maybe I'll think of it next week. Drink fell down. Okay. Well, um, with that, then, um, our show's done for the night and want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in um please come back next week when we'll have another episode of revolutionary socialist review thank you rainer for your uh stupendous contribution and with that i'll bid you all a sweet adieu until next week <laughs>